Great. Even if you don't completely follow the model and the logic behind the model and so on, we don't have to worry about it. Modeling is not part of this course. You're given a rotational dynamics of a rigid body. This works for any rigid body system, quadrotors, UAVs, satellites, even underwater rigid bodies. Yeah, doesn't matter. It has to be a rigid body. That's it. If you're flexible, uh, then this inertia may not be constant and there's more complications there. Yeah, flexibility is give rise to bigger challenges. This is not a good model for flexible systems, but if you have any rigid body system, this is a good model. Okay. Uh, notice because it's a satellite system, so gravity etc. is missing here. Yeah. So if you are working with again something that's on Earth or underwater or whatever, uh, then you have to have gravity. You know, if you have uh, viscous damping and things like that, those also have to be added in the dynamics equation. Yeah. But kinematics is exactly the same. Okay. And the dynamics is actually evolving on a linear space. Yeah, no problem. Omega is on a R3. Yeah, so nice, good. Yeah, what I have mentioned now is that I'm going to take the output as Omega. Okay, so because I, I'm looking at a cascade connection sort of a thing. Now, if you notice, Omega is an input to this system. Okay. So let's see, we are, we are going back to our, uh, this um, cascade of a passive system with a some nonlinear stable system. So omega is an input to the system. If omega is 0, then the system is passive anyway. Sorry, system is stable because if omega is 0, there is nothing on the right hand side. Rho dot equal to 0 is a stable system, yeah, nothing to do, it's a stable system, right. So I'm already done with the my first assumptions that that if this in output is not there, then my system is stable. Okay, so good. So ticked one box. The next question is: This system passive? Okay, we have to check whether the system is passive. So that's what I am saying in the beginning. With omega equal to zero, rho dot equal to zero is stable. So I can actually choose any function w. With any function w, this is stable. Yeah. Later on, of course, I will specify what function w we should choose. But because I am left with rho dot equal to 0, this is stable with any function w. I don't have to worry about what function w to choose. I can choose any positive definite radial unbounded w and I am good. Yeah, you can have rho square, rho 4, anything, anything. Yeah, excellent. So that's good. For passivity of this system, I am going to choose this yeah this should again remind you of what you did with the robotic system right you had the first term as uh, half q dot as mq q dot uh, half q dot transpose mq q dot right which was the term correspond to the inertia right? kinetic energy this is exactly the rotational kinetic energy right this is the expression for the rotational kinetic energy okay and this is of course radially unbounded and all that so what, of course, I have given you this is an exercise. Uh, you have to show that V dot is actually less than or equal to U transpose Y. Okay. It's too easy. Yeah, it's like, just you have to write one line here. Yeah. <laughs> it's just one sentence. Yeah. Uh, you just have to remember that there is this Q symmetric, there is a cross product happening here. Okay. You have to just remember there is a cross product happening here. If you take a V dot, you are going to get omega transpose J omega dot. And you just plug in j omega dot from here. Okay. And that's it. Yeah. So it's very, very easy to conclude that v dot omega is actually less than or equal to u transpose y, with y being omega itself. All right. So that you have to sort of verify. So obviously, what we have shown is that we have a driver system which is passive in this ui combination. And uh, we of course have the this row system which is being driven and that is stable in the absence of the output y. Okay. So we are done. These are the only two assumptions that we require for the previous result to hold. So what do we know? We know that the entire system is passive with this new output v and y where the 
where the uh, u that is the earlier output u is just v minus this guy right where am i getting this expression from this is just this expression right i've just populated this the original input is just the new input and this LGV type term, all right? That's what this is. This is in fact partial of W with respect to rho, and then this guy, all right? This, okay? This is precisely what is multiplying the omega, yeah? And that's all, yeah? And what is what do we know? We know that the new system is now passive with this input output combination all right and then what then life is too easy i have actually asked you to do this as an exercise i have now given you a choice of w yeah i am not asking you to choose any arbitrary w um, this is simply so that the structure of the feedback looks nice that's all yeah if you choose this w which is k log natural 1 plus rho transpose rho okay a weird looking choice yeah but this choice of w actually gives you a uh, nice feedback and also uh, gives you this nice uh, zero state anyway zero state observability is anyway there we don't have to worry about it but anyway you have to verify that also that you have in fact zero state observability not necessarily detectability yeah we in fact have zero state observability all right so so all you have to do is pop you know you just have to put this w in this expression here that's it right because that's what is going to give you your control yeah and once you have that uh, zero state observability anyway you have to verify with this for this particular output omega right so what does that mean it means that if omega is zero then you want to show that rho and omega are zero so you know omega was anyway zero <laughs> yeah if omega is zero omega is already zero you only have to show that rho is also zero okay so you want to sort of look at that because that will come from your feedback expression okay remember zero state observability has to be verified in the absence of the input yeah you have to so so this expression yeah so notice that in order to check zero state observability uh, you typically will say that if omega is zero we also know that omega dot has to be remain zero right this is how we go about checking right zero, zero state observability is exactly like the lasalle argument so if you want to omega to stay at zero you need omega dot to be also zero yeah which means that the entire right hand side has to be zero control was already has to be zero to check zero state observability this term is already zero so all you will have is that this term should also be zero okay and this term you will notice will bring in the row and you'll be able to claim that this equal to zero is the same as row equal to zero okay and you'll be able to claim zero state observability like you need all right you just have to carefully take the partials and so on all right uh, and finally, once you have that the entire system is passive with this input output combination, you know that I can choose my V as a function of the output that is minus phi omega. Yeah, in fact, I can essentially, I'm just giving an example. I could, for example, choose V as minus k tan hyperbolic omega. Yeah, and this is enough to give me global asymptotic stability yeah so the complete feedback is not just this remember it is this along with this and there are two terms yeah because this i already prescribed the real input that goes to the thruster or the actuator would be u right not just v right so v is only one piece so the v piece is this and then there is something more which comes from here okay this is the actual control law or the actual control that command control command that you send to the actuators yeah yeah but you know that with this combination you will have global asymptotic stability okay 
so this is again um, you know something rather nice and powerful so you can see that even for this you know within half a page almost I can come up with a feedback law uh, stabilizing feedback for a rather non-linear system okay like the rigid body attitude dynamics and um, this also a saturated feedback by the way yeah this is bounded feedback yeah? in fact you will notice that there is some nice properties of the first part also this part also has some nice properties yeah you will get some nice saturated feedback okay so again rather powerful result yeah within half a page if you can actually solve this problem yeah usually when I do it without knowledge of passivity uh, you will need a little bit more work yeah it's not this straightforward yeah but here in this case because you are actually employing this idea of passivity uh, interconnected with a you know cascade connection with a stable system um, you have this nice uh, simple construction of feedback and these two exercises that I've given you are actually rather short okay anyway even for this case you will have numerics to do okay so I will give you in, I will give you inertia values and initial conditions actually that's all I need to give you some inertia values and some initial conditions for omega and rho and you will actually be um, implementing this controller and seeing how it performs okay make sense all right okay